The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus are deeply unusual devices. They are full of aggressive brakes from convention while wrapped in cases that look almost exactly like their two direct predecessors. Even that continuity of design is a break from convention after almost a decade of Apple's steady two-year iPhone update pattern. Merely retaining the same design for a third straight year plays against expectations. Inside that case everything else about the iPhone 7 is a decisive statement about the future. The dual cameras on the iPhone 7 Plus promise to usher in a new era in mobile photography. The iconic iPhone home button is no longer a physical button but instead a sophisticated ballet of pressure sensors and haptic vibration motors that simulate the feel of a button. The new A10 Fusion processor blends two high-power cores that rival laptop performance with two low-power cores that combine with a much larger battery to extend runtime by up to two hours. And, yes, Apple has removed the headphone jack. Removing the headphone jack is an act of pure confidence from Apple, which is the only company in tech that can set off a sea changes in the industry by aggressively dropping various technologies from its products. Floppy drives. Optical drives. Its own proprietary 30-pin iPod connector. Flash even USB. Apple decides that it's time to move on, and it has a massive installed base of customers that love and trust the company who make it happen. And now it's decided that, yikes, the headphone jack is over. After using the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus for about a week, it's clear to me that Apple has forceful but considered opinions about how the next generation of phones should fit into our lives. But it's also clear that the iPhone 7 is a transitional step to that vision of the future, not a complete expression of it. The question for would-be upgraders is simple. Is all of the latent and promise in this phone worth the inconvenience of that transition? Here's really no getting around it. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus look more or less exactly like the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus from 2014. They are now water resistant, which is nice, although they're not fully waterproof. Keep them submerged in a meter of water for more than 30 minutes and things might not go your way. Samsung's Galaxy S7 and Note 7 are technically even more water resistant, but I think it's basically a push. You can get these phones casually wet now without catastrophe, and that's a big win. If you want to go snorkeling with your iPhone, you should probably get a case anyhow. Apart from the water resistance, there are three main external differences between the 6 and 7. First, the antenna lines on the back have